We know you love your classic muscle, and we ask you to give us your top picks. Now it's time for us to break down the shakedown. Your top 10 muscle car list starts now. America has always had a love affair with the automobile, the open road, and speed. For 10 years, the big three produced more than 80 different models that personified the American passion for ruling the road with power and style. Hey y'all, welcome to this special episode of Detroit Muscle. Today we salute some of the awesome Motor City machines with a Detroit Muscle Top 10 Muscle Car List. We ask you to give us your top 10 muscle car picks at PowerNationTV.com. We tallied your votes, put them in order, and we're ready to give them back to you. There's a lot to cover, so strap in, hang on, let's kick this pig and get started with number 10. At the beginning of the muscle car era, somebody had to take a real chance to appeal to the speed-minded youth market. That would be Pontiac. Few renegades in the company ignored corporate policy against stock car racing and packed a massive 389 cubic inch engine into a small, lightweight model. And thus, the GTO was born. I'm here with my 64 GTO. It's a post car, factory 389 tri-power four-speed. My dad, he, he brought it home on a trailer uh, in pieces when I was 14. Said this is gonna be my first car. It was intended to just really be just a, you know, kind of put it together as a driver. And as we got into it, you know, we obviously went a little overboard for an everyday driver in restoring it. Considered by many to be the first muscle car, it was the shot heard around Detroit. Pontiac essentially took an old man's car, the Tempest, and made it cool. With big power, a three-speed hurt shifter, sport suspension, hood scoops, dual exhaust, and special badging and took it to the streets. This is the car that I learned how to work on cars. The GTO opened the door for everyone that was waiting to produce a sexy road beast that was affordable, mean, and fun to drive. Drives like it from the 60s. I, I built the car back, all original, manual brakes, manual steering. Goes great when you're going straight. I think that's what it was built for. My dad had 30 to 40 GTOs over the years, I'm, I'm guessing. Of course, uh, then, he brought this car home for me. That's been my favorite passion all, all these years. Available in a two-door coupe, hardtop, and convertible body styles, the GTO became an overnight performance success that would speak to the new muscle car generation. Obviously, anyone with a pulse would be hard-pressed not to love the measure of grab-and-go this car had to offer. Certainly, it's not a torque monster compared to many of today's modern muscle. But who can deny what Pontiac started? You be the judge. Oh wait, that's a different story. That's a great start to our countdown, and it sounds like it won't be the last Pontiac that we see. Reviving some of these old war horses takes a little bit more effort than others. With projects like our Roadrunner, we like to start with a heavy duty wash. Using the Bauer 2300 PSI electric pressure washer from Harbor Freight, dirt and grime don't stand a chance. The 13 amp brushless motor delivers 2300 PSI of cleaning force and delivers over 30% more cleaning power than standard electric pressure washers. It plugs into a regular 120 volt outlet using a 35 foot cord. This quiet pressure washer puts out 1.2 gallons per minute comes with four quick connect spray nozzles and has an onboard detergent tank for improved cleaning. Now, as the countdown continues, after the break, we've got a serious piece of muscle that's got more scoops than an ice cream shop. Stick around for number nine. Up next, there's a big block beast ready to hit the streets and some classic muscle that's truly honorable. Welcome back to Detroit Muscle, as we're counting down the top 10 muscle cars that you picked. 
Now, not all, all the cars can make the list, so we have a few places of honorable mention that we're going to touch on here in a few. But for now, let's talk about a serious piece of muscle, and that would be a real torque monster. Here's number nine. Mustangs. You can either love them or hate them, but you can't deny their place in history, especially in the case of the 69 428 Cobra Jet. 1969 was the year of first. First man on the moon, first passenger flight for the Boeing 747, and this was the first generation for the Mach 1. Mach 1s were very popular, classy, and were offered with different engine packages and options but it was the 428 Cobra Jet that made a statement. It's like nothing else. It takes you back. I mean, if you were young when you first got in a car like that, it takes you straight back to those days. It's as if the Ford design team said, we need sexy, sleek, sinister, with a sport roof, side scoops, spoiler and stripes, that's Jackrabbit fast. Rated at 335 horses, the 428s were delivering more like 400 horses and over 450 foot-pounds of torque. That means it would likely leave you in a cloud of smoke at the stoplight. This new Mach 1 Pony came with all the goods. Classic Mustang body lines, a fastback top with rear window louvers and rear spoiler. Side scoops along with headlamps in the front grille. Sealing the deal was a set of hood pins, the two-tone Mach 1 badging, and the icing on the cake, a functional shaker hood scoop. You see, Ford wasn't messing around in the days of the performance wars. This big block beast was a force to be reckoned with on the streets as well as the track. The interior package is crisp and clean with a generous layout of the wood grain dash and gauges. Easy on the eyes, the Mach 1 still has the sassy look of the first ponies, but if you ever see a shaker hood scoop on a 69 Fastback, watch your step. Mach 1s might be known for the rally days, but a 428 Cobra will deal a deadly bite to just about anything that picks a fight with it off the line. When you're working on the front suspension of your pride and joy, whether you're fixing a problem or you're in the middle of a restoration, one thing's for sure is you want a part that works well and it doesn't cost you your life savings. Duralast tie rods are stress tested to be road ready and they help to restore your ride's handling and control by working to reduce steering wander and that unwanted loose feel. They also come with a lifetime warranty and they're available for many makes and models. We keep counting them down, so I bet you're starting to wonder about those that didn't make the list. Here's some honorable mentions. Our first honorable mention goes to the 69 Camaro Z28 RS. Specifically designed for Trans Am racing, it combines small block performance with road hugging agility, earning it the name, the hugger. Track ready with street manners, the Z28 produced upwards of 375 horses and with a zero to 60 time of just 7.4 seconds. The cowl induction hood, rally stripes, concealed headlights, and plenty of chrome gave the Z28 RS a real aggressive, cool look. Also worth an honorable mention is one of the most recognizable cars of the muscle car era. The 69 Dodge Daytona broke the speed barrier for Chrysler at the track and challenged the appearance notion for many buyers. The pinched nose, modified body panels, and giant rear wing were all added to streamline the car, allowing it to hug the track at speed. NASCAR co-founder Bill France thought the car was dangerous and dealerships couldn't sell them. A track warrior that set several automotive firsts. The Daytona is honorable, indeed. The 64 Ford Fairlane Thunderbolt was the drag strip demon. It was a limited production, drag race only car produced by Ford in 1964. The Monster 427 was rated at 425 horses, but it made upwards of 600 in race two. It was heavy, so fiberglass was used for the hood and fenders. The bumpers and grill were aluminum and the windows were made of plexiglass. Just bare essentials on the inside. Just some van seats, a four-speed, and a tack. Impressive? Yes, 
Practical for the streets? No. But who said muscle needs to be practical? Those were some really good honorable mentions, and who knows, there may be some more. Well, the countdown continues. Up next, let's just say it's time for the king. Roll out the red carpet, cause the king is ready to hit the streets. As they say, y'all come back for more as the Detroit Muscle Top 10 list continues. Welcome back to Detroit Muscle's Top 10 Muscle Car List. No doubt there's a whole lot to cover. Here's number eight. Get ready for the king. Roll out the red carpet muscle car fans. The king is in town. No, I'm not talking about Elvis, but I am talking about the king of the road. In 1968, the infamous Shelby GT500 KR, or king of the road, was made in limited numbers. Only about 1,200 KRs were made for production of the roughly 4,400 made that year. The 68 KR stayed true to the Shelby design but featured a unique fiberglass hood and Shelby was anything but modest about plastering his name all over his masterpiece. But the good looks aren't what got this car titled King of the Road. A 428 Cobra Jet that pushes this snake down the road might have something to do with it. Officially, Shelby claimed that the King only had about 335 horses kicking around between the massive eight cylinders. But guys in the know, and anyone who has ever pushed the loud pedal on one of these, knows that 335 is nothing but a lowball number to keep insurance affordable. A pair of power front disc brakes and oversized drums in the back, along with 16 to 1 power steering ratio, keeps the cavalry under control. The C6 transmission, reinforced shock towers, and staggered rear shocks may have helped with the name as well. Now, rumor has it that the name King of the Road was swiped from GM, but you Chevy guys can talk all you want, stolen name or not, this car's got a set of 15-inch wheels out back to keep the King reigning over his domain. Sequential blinkers out back were touched off with chrome trim and bumpers, and the dual exhaust announced the arrival of his nobility. Up front, a classic Shelby front end with four big lamps and a massive scoop to keep the big block Cobra Jet cool. The hood rams aired down the throat of a hungry 735 CFM Holly, and the stripes, well, they just look cool. These cars were meant to race, and inside, safety was a key component. Inertia reel shoulder straps and seat belts hold the driver and passenger securely in place, while the roll bar runs overhead, just in case. Style was not far behind safety. The deluxe all-vinyl interior, complete with bucket seats, was set off with a walnut grain instrument and door panel. A full set of gauges including an 8,000 rev tack and a speedo capable of reading 140 miles per hour are constant temptations for a heavy right foot. Whether or not Shelby swiped the name King of the Road from GM or not, this Cobra rightfully earns the title. Big Ford power, coupled with Shelby's racing style and engineering, commands respect from any would-be challenger. Wow, three down and so much more to go on this top 10 countdown. Is it possible we'll see another Mustang? We'll see, but for right now though, court is in session. Here comes the judge. Beautifully formed steel, a mixture of battleship ego and smart mouth sass. Pontiac's The Judge GTO was a concept developed by John DeLorean. DeLorean started with an intermediate sized platform and added a big V8 with enough torque to pull a freight train. Added some performance and luxury options, but what to call it? The Judge was borrowed from a comedy line used in a popular TV show, Laugh-In. DeLorean said yes, Let's give them the judge. The younger generation in the muscle car era, they wanted uh, more power. They wanted faster cars, and they gave them faster cars. That's what they gave them. And the old saying back in those days and is what wins on race day sells on Monday. Designed to compete with the Plymouth Roadrunner, 
Pontiac actually gave you less for more money. For an extra 300 bucks, they took stuff off the GTO and called it a weight reduction option. Clever, but no cutting corners as far as style goes. The design team was hard at work. Just look at the color and those groovy graphics. Now aside from the color scheme, Pontiac's strongest feature was under the hood. The judge was going up against the Hemis and the Chevy big blocks of the day. So the top engine option was the big and beefy Ram Air 4. This 400 cubic inch ground pounder was not just your run of the mill big V8. It was a performance beast rated at 370 horsepower, but was more like 400 horses. The Ram Air feature utilized an upper and lower pan to direct maximum airflow, with enough snap off the line punch to give you a case of whiplash. The Ram Air 4 delivered 445 foot-pounds of torque, almost as much torque as a first-gen Dodge Viper. Loud and proud, this goat screams anything but subtle. The design team launched with a carousel red paint scheme and plenty of decals and badging so you knew the judge was in town. The Endura nose piece, rear spoiler, hood mounted tack, functional ram air scoops, her shifter, and plush bucket seats. Everything needed for a full floor show. The regular GTO was nice, a version with the Ram Air 3 was sweet. But the judge with the Ram Air 4 says I'm here, now let the party begin. Man, that's one smoking piece of muscle. Pontiac's made two showings and who knows what's next. But when you come back, we've got a car that's got it all. Stick around as the Detroit Muscle Top 10 Muscle Car List continues. So much muscle and so little time. But hang on for a fan favorite with performance and style. Berryman has been making products for over 100 years to help keep your vehicle on the road. Their B12 Chem Tool is designed to do many things. It will help to remove varnish, gum, and fuel residue in your fuel system. It can also increase fuel mileage and lower emissions of your ride. Plus, it helps to disperse unwanted moisture in the fuel system by simply pouring it into your tank. B12 Chem Tool can be used in two and four stroke gasoline engines, it's safe on catalytic converters and O2 sensors, and it's great in marine applications. Now, back to the countdown. Here's number six. The 67 and 68 models sold well, but it was the 69 Camaro that is without a doubt the most popular Camaro of all time. And the 69 RS SS 396 delivered it all, power and sex appeal. This Camaro is a perfect combination of what happens when performance meets style and swagger. If you ordered one of these, chances are you're not worried about price. The guy who bought this car wasn't worried about price, you know. Then a $100 option was like a $1,000 option today. So he really didn't care. He wanted what he wanted in and wanted the best looking SS396 could buy. The Super Sport or SS package is a step up from stock, but to step up to the L78 396 option, you have to be really ready to open your wallet. This high performance contender is 396 cubic inches of pure street muscle. Rated at 375 horses and 410 pounds of torque, it's likely you'd be ready for any grudge match. There are plenty who prefer the SS package strictly because in a street bike, nobody cares how much fancy chrome you've got. On the other hand, if bling is your thing, the Rally Sport or RS trim package includes all the eye candy. Special black painted grille with concealed headlights, hockey stick fender striping, simulated rear fender louvers, front and rear wheel moldings, badging, and plenty of bright work. The Rally Sport trim package puts you in the high roller category. You know, what was really cool of Chevrolet is, is the amount of options available to a customer. They really blanketed the whole segment of buyers. You know, if you wanted a base car with a straight six in it, you know, to drive back and forth to work, you can do that. 
all the way up to a Copo, you know, you could, they, they really covered the whole spectrum for everybody. Finding a 69 Camaro 396 with both RS and SS packages is like a unicorn. You get a rare combination of the most lavishly equipped Camaro with the big block performance of a drag car combined. It's one of America's greatest pony cars that continues to be celebrated. Iconic because it's rare, but also because people love them. You Mobar fans, sit down, hang on. Here's number five. In 1968, Chrysler had come up with something that was a fresh and powerful new design. The newly redesigned 68 Dodge Hemi Charger RT was born. Curves in all the right places and a punch that could only be delivered by a Hemi. The Hemi has always been the pinnacle engine and is named for the hemispherical combustion chambers in the heads. That's where the real Mopar magic happens. This ultra rare 68 RT is an actual 12,000 mile survivor. A survivor is basically an unrestored car, uh, a car with original paint, uh, mostly original interior, that kind of stuff. It can have some minor repair work, that kind of stuff, but uh, it has to be mostly original. Dodge has always set itself apart from other car makers in several ways, and this new RT design carried over into the 69 and 70 models with most notably the optional 446 pack in the 70 model. 1970 was the first time the six pack was offered on the Charger. You can only order it on the RT and just 684 got them. Three deuces churn out 390 horsepower and it had more low end torque than the Hemi. It was a 446 pack, much like the one growling underneath the hood of this 70 Charger. A Hurst pistol grip shifter gave you marksman like control. RTs were made for road or track, so you got extra heavy-duty suspension rolling on a set of wide tread tires. Plus, there was that nifty race-style gas cap. Built as a fastback on the Cornette chassis, it was part street machine and part family car. It sold okay, but really took off in 68 when the second gen was unveiled. Sleeker body lines and its more aggressive front end gave it that signature look. The 70 Charger was the last of the second gen design and the changes were subtle. It still had those nifty hidden headlights, but a new wraparound chrome bumper was added. RT models now had simulated side scoops. In the rear, the tail light housing stretched the full width of the tail panel. And inside the Charger, Dodge offered several options, including a dash full of instruments, including a tack and a speedo for ease of sight, and some fancy power options. The second generation Charger RTs carried Dodge into the history books as one of the most recognizable cars ever produced. Agree or disagree, the 68 to 70 Charger RTs are more popular than ever. But one thing's for sure, the 68 Hemi RT still wears the crown. That's a great pick coming in at number five and there's just four more to go. You know, there's some high performance ground pounders that didn't make it to the list. As a matter of fact, there were several two-seater favorites that we can't forget. Not on the list, but definitely worthy of an honorable mention. Let's take a look. In 1965, Carroll Shelby raised the performance bar by stuffing a 7-liter, 450-horse big block into a Cobra body. The result? Absolute overkill. The brutally quick 427 Cobra SC featured an aluminum skin with track-ready fuel door, roll bar, wide wheel flares, huge tires, and competition side pipes. It's a 160 mile an hour race car with a license plate, and only 316 were built. If you ever get an opportunity to drive a real 427 Cobra, you better jump on it, because it could be a truly honorable experience. The 67 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray was a last and fitting close to the second gen Corvette. The 427 Big Block was rated at 435 horses, but the actual horsepower rating could have been rated well over 550. Now to many, the 67 was the pinnacle of achievement for its handling, road grip, and sheer power. Never short on looks, Stingray's options included alloy wheels, five-slotted side fender vents, retractable headlights, and lots of chrome. 
plenty of show and go. The sexy muscle of the 67 Stingray is honorable by any standards. Also worth an honorable mention is the 1970 American Motors Experimental two-seater. The AMC AMX was built on a Javelin floor plan with a 390 cubic inch, three and a quarter horse V8. The car's signature look came with a functional ram air hood, flush mount grille, flying buttress roof line, and steep angled rear glass. A powerful short wheelbase two-seater pony car, the AMX was positioned by some as a serious Corvette competitor. The real deal at the track and on the streets, the 1970 model is thought of as the last real AMX that would do zero to 60 in just over six and a half seconds. Plenty of muscle, but sales never flourished, so for now, we'll have to leave it in history as another honorable mention. We're just a few away from revealing the number one muscle car that you voted for. But coming up next is the number four car with a kind of a cartoon connection. Stay with us as the Detroit Muscle Top 10 Muscle Car List continues. So much muscle and so little time. But hang on for a fan favorite with performance and style. Seafoam has been making products to keep your engine running smoothly since 1942. Their motor treatment is a blend of cleaning and lubricating ingredients that can be used in both gasoline or diesel engines. When added to your tank, it works to clean injectors and carburetor passages by removing deposits and residues. It also helps to control moisture and fuel and can safely be used in all types of two and four stroke engines. If you're looking to store some of your play pretties, one ounce of sea foam per gallon of fuel works as a stabilizer. Now, back to the top 10. We're making our way to number one of this top 10 list, and so far we've just introduced our first Mopar with the 1968 Hemi Charger. Well, better late than never, our next car is a Mopar favorite, and it's also a part of a collection of cartoon muscle cars, so it looks like we're getting a second helping of Mopar. So I think it's time for us to bring on the bird. How many cards could you purchase right off the showroom floor and take it to the drag strip and win? Well, that's exactly what you could do with the 69 Plymouth Roadrunner 446 pack. But look at it, it's boxy with limited options, no trim, no hubcaps, no power steering, flat black liftoff fiberglass hood, and an oversized scoop, and a bench seat. Who would buy it? A bunch of folks, actually. This original 69 Roadrunner packed everything under the hood for someone looking to settle a score on the street or at the drag strip. This car is all original, uh, probably one of the best paint cars we have. Plymouth wanted to produce a super fast, no frills beast, and Motor Trend would end up naming it Car of the Year. By 1970, Speedimus Maximus was the street moniker for the Roadrunner. Many of Ford and Chevy spent effort chasing down the bird car, but like the Coyote, they had a hard time catching it. What I like about driving the car is, is how it handles. The car handles great. The engine is, never came out of the car. It still runs excellent. Powering this bird is a 383 four barrel, which hammers out 335 horsepower. For some extra dough, you could throw in a 446 pack or Hemi if you wanted to really leave them in the dust. If Lester's out on the road and wants a little more umph, he just flips a switch under the dash and up pops an air grabber scoop to suck in some cool air. Plymouth made a few cosmetic changes this year, like moving the badge from the door up to the front fender. This one features the optional gold dust trail. Body lines were smoothed out and the side scoops were molded to the rear quarters. They also got new grills with vertical fins and a Plymouth emblem for the first time. Bumpers now featured integrated turn signals and the tail lights were split into two narrow slivers. Now it wouldn't be a road runner without that signature. <laughs> Plymouth engineers spent thousands of dollars designing a horn that sounded just right. The Roadrunner kicked off Mopar's signature cartoon cars, which included the Super B, 
the Duster, and the Demon. It was a budget-minded muscle car coming in at around three grand. The 383 was standard along with heavy-duty brakes and suspension. An optional rear spoiler shows that this bird is ready to fly. So, what's left to say about this piece of muscle? Matching speed with eye-popping looks really turned this car into a living cartoon. And the A12 version with its stripped-down approach to performance is what makes this rare bird so popular to this day. We use Rock Auto to repair suspension, brakes, and engine management systems on our projects all the time. And those are the type of components that you associate with keeping them on the road. But they also have parts to keep them looking good. Like this new OE style replacement front bumper for our 70 Mustang. The high quality chrome plating looks great and the price won't break the bank. All we need to do is install it on the front of our pride and joy. So if you're interested in giving your ride a facelift, you may want to check out Rock Auto. Now it's back to the top 10 list. Well, we still have three to go on this top 10 list and our next top three are owned by the same guy. There are lots of folks that have one or maybe even two project cars that they've purchased, restored, or inherited. These are sometimes cars brought back to life based on a childhood memory, a first car, or even a dream project. Then there are folks who have a real passion toward finding rare jewels that most of us will only see at a special event or a museum. We know one of these guys. Would you call him an enthusiast, a collector, or an aficionado? Me? Well, I'm just going to call him cool. You guys don't run off and stick around as we continue with the Detroit Muscle Top 10 Muscle Car List. Up next, there's a big block beast ready to hit the streets. If you're just joining us, our top 10 list kicked off with the car that started it all, a 1964 Pontiac GTO Tri-Power. Coming in at number nine is the 69 Mustang 428 Cobra Jet. Number eight is the 68 Shelby GT500 KR. The 69 GTO Judge Ram Air 4 is at number seven. Number six is the 69 Camaro RS SS 396. Number five is the 68 Hemi Charger. And number four is the 69 Roadrunner 446 pack. Now, as I mentioned earlier, our top three cars are owned by the same guy who has more unique muscle than most of us could imagine. And he's the kind of guy that loves to drive them. Working our way to the top, here's number three. The number three car is probably no surprise to you. The 1969 Ford Boss 429 is a blue oval hoss that packs a lot of punch. But what may be a surprise is that the owner of this one owns a total of 10 of them. Uh, I've owned that car for about eight or nine years now. And the thing is, I love driving that car. I drive it all over the place, the local cruise-ins. It's one of my favorite cars as far as a driver. The Boss 429 is the best of both worlds. You get great looks and big performance. It's sexy, fast, and rare. There were just over 850 made in 1969. The fastback style alone makes it one of the best looking by default. This asphalt stripping street fighter with its wide tires, bulging fenders, and serious hood scoop gives us a hint of the beast that's underneath the hood. The straight line acceleration of that particular car any of the Boss 429s back then, it didn't take much to make them fly. The 429 Big Block Boss was developed by Ford to compete with Chrysler's Hemi. So they developed the 429, which was rated at 375 horses and 450 pound-feet of torque. But the word on the street was that it was way underrated and really produced over 500 horses, taking this pony to stallion status. Since it was the biggest engine ever put into a Mustang, Ford had the CarCraft Performance Group shoehorn this new massive semi-hemi engine into the redesigned space. Disc brakes on the front, competition suspension, Magnum 500 wheels, and painted graphics, it's simple and clean. Ford produced the Boss 429 for just two years before cost, emissions, and other issues stopped its production. 
but out of all the muscle cars ever produced, it's hard to imagine any could match up to the Boss 9. Well, the Boss 9 didn't make it to the number one spot, but you Ford guys did get three on the list. Now, there are several road warriors that we haven't even talked about. I think we can show some love to these big performers. Like the 69 Copo Camaro. Copo stands for Central Office Production Order. It's a special order right from the factory. Only 69 were ever produced and 50 came from one single dealership. And what made these cars special was what was under the hood. It was an ultra lightweight, fire breathing dragon. Making 430 horses, this specific engine was supposed to only go in Corvettes. But if you filled out the right paperwork, then Chevy wouldn't catch on. And the 69 Mercury Cyclone Spoiler too. Mercury wanted to compete with the aero cars in NASCAR. They had the power, but it was aerodynamics that would help you get to the finish line first. The Cyclone's nose was lengthened and pinched with a flush mounted grill and tight fitting bumper. The rockers were reshaped, allowing the car to sit low to the track. While successful, NASCAR eventually banned all aero cars, leaving the Cyclone Spoiler 2 in the history books. That's a lot of really cool muscle. If I was a gambling man, I'd have to say number one is gonna be, shoot, I ain't gonna tell you. You guys are just gonna have to stick around and see what takes the number one spot. As they say, y'all come back for more as the Detroit Muscle Top 10 list continues. Welcome back, we're so close, but just to let you know where we started today. Our number five car is a 1968 Hemi Charger. The number four pick is a 1969 Roadrunner 446 pack. And our number three car is the rare 69 Boss 429 Mustang. Now in 1970, there were several street fighters, and then there was the big dog. Here's number two. Now, if you Google muscle car, you'll see that the 70 Chevelle SS shows up top for a good reason. It's arguably the most popular Chevelle due in part to its King Kong motor. Then there's all the visual goodies, from the cool cal induction scoop to the streamlined style fit and finish, and available options. It all works together. In 1970, it was the king of the streets, and the old line, there's no replacement or displacement, was never truer. The new LS6 engine, having 454 cubic inches, left many street demons in the dust. It was rated at 450 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. So this new Chevelle SS was able to reclaim the streets. But the 70 LS6 Chevelle SS wasn't cheap. The package was several hundred dollars extra, and for that, you got special rear suspension, dual exhaust with bright tips, power front disc brakes, bright engine accents, rear bumper black insert, a power bulge hood with hood pins, and special rims and tires completed the package. So it was obvious this wasn't your economy muscle car. This head turning torque monster had it all. An over the top amount of power, lavish interior, road hugging agility, with looks that screamed road beast. Well, you bow tie guys, there is definitely one of your favorites. Didn't quite make it to the top honors, but that is definitely a force to be reckoned with, without a doubt. Now, that just leaves your top pick. We really appreciate all your cast votes, and we hope this doesn't cause too much controversy amongst your inner circle. Now, without further delay, here's number one. The 70 Hemi Cuda is widely accepted as one of the most sought after muscle cars. Only 652 were built, making an original Hemi Cuda a rare sight. When tested back in 1970, the 426 Hemi Cuda was easy to clock a zero to 60 time of 5.8 seconds. With its classic shape and tire shredding American power, who wouldn't want one? It's fast, it's really quick. We up the compression just slightly, and it's a four-speed car, 410 gear, so it's a, it's a quick car also. It runs like a champ. Now, there's only one thing cooler than a bright orange Hemi Cuda, and that would be two of them. Now, Mopar have been known to do a few things to kind of separate themselves from the pack. 
It's kind of like this car. It's got the optional Gator Print black vinyl top. The long list of cool options included a track pack with a 354 differential ratio, rally wheels, a range of electrifying colors, pistol grip shifters, hockey stick sport stripes, hood pins, and an assortment of creature comforts. But due to the extra cost, almost $1,000, the Hemi Cuda was forced into scarcity. And soon this Kingfish would be required to take its place in muscle car history as one of the all-time Mopar favorites. Well, there you have it, the Detroit Muscle Top 10 Muscle Car List. We'd like to thank all the car owners and you. Until next time, let's go to the house.